Did dinosaurs have feathers? In part one, we looked at two different evolutionary theories as to the origin of flight and that a growing number of creationist researchers are using one of these theories to support the notion that dinosaurs didn't have feathers. Now in this video I will show why I think this kind of reasoning is problematic and why it will only lead to more confusion. If you haven't seen the first video, then I encourage you to go back now and watch that video so that you know what's going on. Now you'll remember that according to the tree down theory of flight, Microraptor and other similar feathered animals are called birds because their ancestors were supposedly true flying feathered reptiles. In the other evolutionary theory of flight, that's the grand up view, Microraptor and other similar feathered animals are called dinosaurs because their ancestors were supposedly theropod dinosaurs like Sinosauropteryx. But, and this is important, both groups ultimately believe that birds evolved from ground-dwelling archosaurian reptiles. The tree down theory of flight merely bypasses the dinosaurian stage. And this is why some creationists will say that dinosaurs didn't actually have feathers. Their justification for this opinion, however, is often derived from the tree down evolutionary theory of flight. And this is different than when creationists say that dinosaurs did in fact have feathers. And that's because they've always been dinosaurs. They just happen to have feathers. Second, when tree down theorists call Microraptor and other similar feathered animals birds, they are seeking to draw their readers back to an archosaurian reptile capable of powered flight. They are not thinking forward in terms of modern birds. Yet when some creationists call Microraptor and other similar feathered animals birds, they inadvertently cloak the word in modern garb without unpacking all of the hidden baggage. And this obviously leads to confusion. When a lay Christian reads an article that says Microraptor and other similar creatures were birds, they automatically associate these animals with modern birds and not with some evolutionary ancestor that got that name because it retained flight feathers from a flying feathered reptile. Our modern concept of bird, therefore, cannot be read back into the same word used by evolutionary scientists to describe Microraptor and other similar creatures. And finally, as it turns out, Microraptor and many other similar feathered animals have a lot more in common with Sinosauropteryx than they do with modern birds anyway. Here is the skeleton of Microraptor, for example. Presently, a very small subset of Darwinian evolutionists and a growing number of creationists are calling this creature a bird. Here is the skeleton of Sinosauropteryx. Presently, everyone still calls this creature a dinosaur. And here is the skeleton of a modern bird, a chicken to be precise. Now let's compare these skeletons. Notice, first of all, the skulls. Clearly, although there are slight differences, the skull of the Sinosauropteryx is anatomically much closer to that of the Microraptor than to the bird. Now let's look at the hands. It is true the chicken and Microraptor do possess a semilunate carpal bone, something essential for flight. But the overall architecture of the Microraptor hand is much closer to that of the Sinosauropteryx than it is to the chicken. Notice that both the Microraptor and the Sinosauropteryx have the same three fingers, with the second finger being the longest. Now let's go to the pelvic area. The pubis bone for Microraptor and the chicken are similar in that they are both directed to the rear of the animals. Yet the entire pelvic region of the Microraptor and Sinosauropteryx as a whole are more similar to each other than either of them are to the chicken, which has a very different overall shape. To the chest region, and we see that Microraptor and Sinosauropteryx both have gastralia, dermal bones that grew between the sternum and the pelvis. Modern birds do not have these bones. Of course, the long bony tail in both Microraptor and Sinosauropteryx are clearly at odds with the short piger style in modern birds. Anatomically speaking, it is quite clear that Microraptor and Sinosauropteryx are much more like each other than either of them are to modern birds. Okay, so what does all of this mean? Well, look out for part three to find out. So that's all from me here, Ken Colson at Creation Unfolding. 
Of course, I've got a website, www.creationunfolding.com for more resources. I've got a book if you're interested. Um, of course, if you really liked this video, then please hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for further access to more videos as they come up. Besides, it really helps that Google algorithm along. Of course, the greatest support that you could give me is prayer. So if you could pray for me right now, that would be much appreciated. Thank you and goodbye.